Hello everyone and welcome to episode 17 of Bucks UK TV. That's right, we are now old enough to drive, uh, in the UK at least. Uh, I'm joined again by Dom, Alex and Adam. Say hello to everyone. Hi. Hi everyone. Hi there. And as usual, please, 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 please join the club if you haven't done yet by going to bucksuk.org and clicking on join. Tell us your thoughts by mail at bucksuk.org and WhatsApp us on 07311. 212713. Uh, at which point, then we'll cut straight through the mustard and uh, work out what happened against the Rams. Okay, so Dom, if we start with you then, let's get your uh, your overall thoughts on the game because it was, uh, stereotypically, as we talk about soccer, it really was a game of two halves. Yeah, yeah. They, we, they built us up and they knocked us down. Typical books, I suppose you'd say, but hopefully we were thinking this season it wouldn't be like that, but it was. I, I must say I was very impressed with Goff. He did well. And the two wide receivers, Cup and Woods, I mean, I, I think we'll go on to offense and defense later, so I'll save some of that. Sean McVay probably out. I don't know if he out coached us. He certainly out thought us for a lot of the plays. Very disappointing, but quite two even teams. And to say what a disaster it turned out to be, I think we only did lose by three points. It's easy to probably forget about that. And Matt, Adam, please, would you agree? Go. Sorry, Adam, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree with that, yeah. It's di disappointment more than anything else because the game, even how bad we played or how, how not very well managed the game was, we still had a chance to win it and to lose it the way we did. We might as well have lost that in 2019. It was exactly the same type of performance as we saw from last year. Alex, in the cold, hard light of uh, where we are now, which is Wednesday night, does it still sting? It does. It really does. And, and that's because we were good enough to win that game. We really were. We've got the quality to do it. It's, it was it was almost like Chicago all over again. You know, we really should have won it. And you know, as Adam says, you know, we, we it, it was like watching us last year. We were good, but we just weren't quite good enough to get over the line. I think that's the bit that really hurts. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I think that, that analogy to the Chicago game is bang on. I was always wondering whether that was going to be the game that got away from us. Unfortunately, now it's probably the games that got away from us. And I guess, you know, we'll, we'll come on and talk about the future, but <clears throat> there's, there's only so many games you can let get away from you. Um, as you said, Dom, we'll, we'll start talking about the offense and maybe we'll come back to you then. Um, I mean, we all, we all saw the game. We all see the headlines against Brady. Um, how high up do you want to string him? <laughs> well, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Because it was just like Jameis. The end, that final drive, I was confident. I really was confident. Yeah. And then it's just it's just the wrong throw. It was double coverage anyway. It just oh so frustrating. I nearly put my foot through it, Tally. Every word was coming <laughs> out. Uh, oh, it was so frustrating. So frustrating. But the the main thing that's got me a bit concerned, and it's linked to the with the offense is Mike Evans. I thought that touchdown he did was fantastic where he well, he battled. I think he got about three different defenders tackling him, but he still managed to get ahead and get his arm out and get a touchdown. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Now, the problem we're going to get with Evans, everyone seems to think, because next season we've got Godwin, Barrett and David all up for a new contract. And people seem to be saying, when I'm looking at the boards, maybe they'll have to get rid of one of them. I just hope it's not Evans. I don't think we can afford to let him go. I really don't. Uh, Adam, also, you're shaking your head. How important is yeah, Evans? Uh, so important. Um, I, I can understand him having quiet games, but you've got to realise this guy is unbelievable. He's in a league of his own or maybe two or three others. Um, we can't 
just assume that we're getting rid of him. And if you ask me, I think he's going to be a buck for life. You'll retire so. a buck, hopefully. Yeah, really. Yeah. He's brilliant. Yeah. Whether or not he's on the stat sheet, he's definitely the one player you have to scheme for against us. Well, yeah, he's the he's the PI king of the league. The most yards in, <laughs> <laughs> in every game, he's getting like 70, 80 yards PI. Yeah. So, Alex, Dom, Dom's covered that pass. Um, what about the rest of the game? <laughs> uh, oh, it was interesting, I think, as a... Uh... Uh, the word I can use there, you know, first half offensively, I was, I thought we were pretty good. I'll be honest. I, I, there was nothing that stood out to me, which I thought was bad or dreadful at all. I was really happy. And then, I don't know, we went into the locker room at half time, and it was almost though a different team walked out. Um, I, I think it's fair to say that the, the defences on both teams really turned up second half and made it uh, a, a lot trickier for the offences to work. Um, I mean, you know, you look at the interception uh, from Brady, the first one in particular, I, I don't know what happened there. Uh, it, it, did he just not see, uh, <laughs> the, the, you know, it, 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 Antonio Brown's going uh, going across the field and you've got the defender who's sort of reading where his eyes are and, I mean, the, the pass wasn't anywhere near Brown either. It was, it was absolutely, it was really, really poor. Um so it was certainly offensively, it was certainly a game of two halves in that respect. Um, we didn't have a running game at all. That was a real big problem, I thought. You know, we were so one dimensional. The moment the Rams cut out the run game, we had to go to the air. And Brady was just trying to force the ball uh, so much. It was uh, that's one of the worst performances I think I've ever seen Tom Brady play. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, I was looking at the stats from last week compared to the um, sorry, uh, between Brady and, and Goff. Um, Brady had 216 yards and Goff had 376. You know, for me, that just says everything you need to know on, like, in terms of the, the quarterback performance there. Yeah. You know, both had two touchdowns, but Goff managed to get the ball moving a lot better than Brady. Yeah, you could argue that, you know, we had a makeshift O-line, which, uh, I mean, I'll tell you what, I thought he looked panicked in the pocket. I don't know what Dom and Adam think, but he was getting rid of the ball so quickly. I don't think he had any faith in the offensive line at all. There was a few passes where he let them go and, the route by the receiver hadn't even been completed by the turn the receiver got by the time the receiver got his head round the ball had already gone past him that's a so, really interesting um <clears throat> that's a really interesting perspective because actually if anything i kind of thought that it's like, I'm, not, I'm not disagreeing with you i think on no. some plays the ball did come out right but there mm. were also other plays where i think brady held on for it for too long yeah um i don't know whether it's yeah. a coverage sack or he just he couldn't i, I thought the mm. line performed as well as you could expect yes he was under pressure I don't think he was helped by the play calling. No, and without no, any running not. game to scare anyone, they were just stepping up. <coughs> Adam, we haven't talked about the running game. What do you, what do you think about that? Oh, th it's, oh. it's driving me insane. It's driving me mental. It's, it's not even a case of abandoning the running game now because we never get it going in the first place. And how it's, it's obvious for defences who are playing against us. They know Brady's not going to extend a play. They know he's not going to scramble around. So it's so easy for them to drop back, cover everyone they can, and because they know Brady's has to throw it out or throw it up somewhere. So we make it so easy. And without the running game, that is literally all we're doing. Every single play is just... Yeah, uh, when it's third and 10, is not, you know, third oh. and 10, we've got five wide and everyone's running down the field. That's, that's a lot harder than third and two. Exactly. I don't understand why we're not chipping away at the downs. Instead of this, trying to get a first down every down, what happened to the Brady of 20 years where he's chipping away at the downs? I wish Bruce Arians would let him do what he does best. But, I don't know, the, the, that last game was just a terrible display of how not to do it. Do we think it's Bruce? Do we think it's Byron? Do we think it's Tom? Tom, what it's... do you reckon? Well, it's probably a mixture of all three. I mean, we had 49 pass attempts and 18 run attempts in the game. Now, against New Orleans, they said they abandoned the run because we, we were chasing the game. We weren't really chasing the game. They can't use that excuse. And what really, sorry, I'm not sweating. What really wound me up as well was, uh, why no Shady McCoy? I can't understand it. I was really excited when we signed Shady McCoy. Not because of his run, you know, he's, he's probably lost a yard and he can't beat the man. But catching, that's what he can do. He can catch, but we keep throwing it 
to Rojo and Leonard Fournette. Fournette's probably a bit better, but they keep dropping it. They've dropped it for the last three weeks. Mm-hmm. It keeps happening. Now, an idiot isn't someone who makes a mistake, is it? An idiot's someone who keeps making the same mistake over and over again. And I've been married three times, so I should know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we keep doing the same thing. And you'd think, I'm just a postman from England. What do I know? But then you think you've presumed that these coaches must have a clue. And it seems so bloody obvious. But they don't do it. They keep throwing to them. I mean, why bother signing Shady McCoy? I don't understand yeah, why. Yeah. Why, why, yeah. Bother why signing? draft Vaughan? And why yeah, draft yeah. Vaughan? Because they're not... Mm. I don't know. It, it's just ridiculous. I think the o, give them the O-line credit, like you were saying, because they kept Donald quiet. And no team keeps Donald quiet like Tampa did. That was superb. Yeah. But you raised a really good point there. And Alex, I'd love your view on this. It's about yeah. coaching. I, I, I get, I'm like a scratch record. <clears throat> a good coach works with the tools they've got mm-hmm. rather than, you know, this is my system and I'm going to get the players for my system, which takes three years and it's not going to work until I've got them. I mean, what, what you know, Dom's right. These are, like, these are guys being paid a lot more than, um, than we are. And and they're working in football. So what are we are we wrong? What 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 are we not seeing? I don't know because I think we are seeing it. I think it's the coaches who aren't seeing it. Hmm. Um, it it seems like to me it seems that Bruce Arians is stuck in his ways and that he's not willing to adapt to who we've got uh, in terms of personnel. Um, you know it. It, 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 you know, I look at the run game. And, well, <laughs> I say run game. What the lack of a run game <laughs> um, from uh, you know um, Monday night, and it, it, what we always do. And I think uh, I, I haven't looked deeply. I'm going to assume he did this when he was at, in Arizona. But every time on first down, we're always running the ball, and he's not moving away from that. Now, if he did that when he was in Arizona, like I say, I don't know for sure, so I'm not saying he did do that but if that was the case then this is clearly a coach who's still stuck in his ways and isn't willing to change you're right this is this is emmett smith dallas cowboys 1990 with aikman handing off on first gown up the gut yeah um you know that's exactly what it is same as like you know it's it's, um that's exactly what we're doing and it it doesn't seem to change and the fact that we can sit there on the forum and we can call the plays before they happen i know yeah i wouldn't even mind it if it was a run on first down but he was up the side or something, someone in motion. It's the mm. same exact run straight yeah. into the pack every single time. And actually, it's the variability because I, I would have thought, and again, preempted, I'm not a tactical mastermind, clearly. No. Um, <laughs> but to have the same formation and do different things out of it. Yeah. So have yeah. that formation where Rojo's in a single back, but then mm-hmm. actually motion him out and then all of a sudden yeah. toss the ball out yeah. to him and it becomes Although... an off tackle run. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Or, I've, I've, or I don't fake think... to him and then dink mm. it through to him when he's just got to the other side of the line, like it's on the goal yeah. line. Or uh, uh, actually, and if he's not going to be in pass protection, then actually have him waiting on the um, first down line at the sideline, you know, literally mm-hmm. waiting for that flare pass, that emergency release that we know that Brady loves. And if he's standing still, then hopefully Brady can hit him. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely, Kieran. And I mean, you know, we were saying about or oh, I was saying about whether it's Bruce Arians stuck in his ways, but you know, I was just thinking while you were saying that, it's Byron Leftwich who's doing the, the play calling. Yeah. So, you know, if, essentially this is Byron Leftwich, Leftwich's um, offence. And I, I'm not a huge fan of the way he's calling plays because it's so unimaginative and it's not very inventive because it is the same thing over and over. As you say, we're watching the play, we're watching the games and we know what's coming because it's what Byron Leftwich does. And I think defences, are, uh, are opposition oh. defences are going to work us out sooner than later. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. You know, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come back to hurt us. We, Byron Leftwich has got to be more flexible um, I mean, I'll be honest, I don't want him calling plays anymore because it's just hurting us, and especially when he's calling plays where Brady's got to throw the ball 40 or 50 yards. Like Adam said, you know, where's the Brady that was just chipping away at the downs? You know, take time off that clock, chip away at the downs, score some touchdowns, let defence see it out. We are trying to force that ball so far down the field, and we saw what happened against the Rams. He got intercepted because he was make, trying to make plays which just weren't there. Yeah, there's a then, oh, so go on, Adam. I was going to say, there's a key thing to all this. Look, we've won big, so the play calling works sometimes. And if you look back, it is almost 100% across the board. When we get a run game going, all those plays start to work. 
the games we look terrible is where we don't even try to establish a run game. It's just gone straight away. Mm. And that's the common denominator and everything. All the bad losses, mm. zero run game. If, 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 if why, why wouldn't they? I just don't understand why why they would do it. I, I read today that Peyton Manning, when he went to Denver, they pretty much said to him, you call the plays you want to do. Whereas Tom Brady, they're trying to, well, obviously not do that. Even if not call no. the plays, tell us the plays that you think you're good at. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Keep him happy. Absolutely. Yeah. Super Bowls. There is a, there yeah. is a yeah. bit of that. I feel like we 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 we, you know, we started the season throwing those deep outs, which clearly, you know, Tom. I still think Tom's arm is good, but he yeah. he clearly it's can't make those throws. Yeah, yeah. The deep out, that sort of fifteen yard out, which the ball's in the air a long while, and there's not a lot of separation. So that's fine. I'm happy not calling those, but I do kind of wonder. Like, this isn't a very modern thing in coaching, but sort of, you know, the big thing five, maybe 10 years ago was to script your first 20 plays. Mm. And you say, no matter what the down and distance is, these are the plays we're going to run and in this order. And I wonder if that might just tell us what's working and what's not working. And also just keep, you know, because actually we don't know, we're going to call that play whether it's first and 10 or third and 20 or third mm. and two. Yeah. So actually that gives us some mm. variability that I think the other side of the ball then wouldn't know. Mm. Has yeah. anyone read Bruce Arians' book? Oh, no, no, he's the quarterback whisperer. No. Yeah, I read it, and that is exactly what he does. He's got a scripted bunch of plays, and that's why they open the game with every game. I Wait, don't believe and that, that. And last year, I attributed all Jameis's picks on his first... It was almost the first drive he was going to get mm. a pick when he was pick six. And I attributed it to reading that book and thinking, oh, well, everyone knows what's coming. And I was hoping that was going to go this year, but I don't know. Mm. That is such a strange. You can't. That is just crazy, isn't it? Mm. That'd just Ooh. be crazy. Yeah. If that's but, the case. But it goes to show, actually, in a way, what maybe what we said earlier was right. This does sound like a coach who is still sticking to what he did 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, Bruce Evans has been around the game for a long time. Don't get me wrong, he's a great coach and he knows a lot more about football than I do. But yeah. ultim- ultimately, you have to adapt to the times. And if that's not yeah. the way that football's going, you it's, need to change. It's even during the game. Because obviously it's working. We're seven and four. So things are working. But during the game, if you can see something is not going that way or it hasn't worked five times in a row, please don't stick with that. Change to something. Mm. Try something new. Yeah. But no, I just didn't do, didn't do it against the Rams. Well, the other thing is I'd buy something not working if that's because it's part of setting something else up down the line. So mm. we keep running up the middle, we keep running up the middle, yeah. ah, it's a flea flicker. Or yeah. Yeah. keep having the man in motion and ignore them. Keep having the man in motion and ignore them, ha ah, ah, it's a handoff wide. You yeah. know, I, that, would, that would make sense to me then, because yeah. you're trying to... Set, yeah. But yeah. it seems, just seems aimless. Mm-hmm. And we've got the players to adapt to it, aren't we? Mm. We've got every, all the tools. I think that's the more frustrating bit, Dom, actually, the fact that we've got the players to do it. Yeah. And as a fan, I personally find that really irritating. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that does say how far we've come. The fact that we are being so fussy and so finicky <laughs> that we lost to the Rams by three. Ah, I know. You know, last year or the year before, I'd be like, well, that's a fantastic result. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the difference is this year, Kieran, is this is, this is where we finally met the playoffs. In mm. This hopefully. is where and the Browns look like they're going to make the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hope, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're all in. So these defeats by three hurt more than what they did before. Although I think it's fair to say we're not going to get that first round by. So this is, no. yeah, we are to go into the playoffs. And I still think it's if we are going to the playoffs. Then I actually it's about who, who, who we're lined up against, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think we'll just do one it. more thing. Oh, we'll just one it. more thing, if I could, on the offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, listening to the YouTube videos earlier, and I'm come across a Colin Coward. I don't know if any of you seen it. Yeah, big fan. Although sixty-six many people like plays. Him. Yeah, sixty-six plays, and only six were in motion. What mm-hmm. on earth? Sixty-six plays and only six in motion. Do something different, please. <laughs> Turn that to yeah. twenty-six in motion. Well, not, that's not, what, that's again, all the Rams I mean, did. And again, again, so not an expert, but the, the, yeah. the, the going in motion isn't even necessarily to do with the play. Not it's exactly. about trying to work out whether they're in man or zone. You know, it's, yeah. Yeah. get every bit yeah. of last intel that you can. Yeah. yeah. Doubt in the if, minds. Mm. That's all you no, no. Do. I can't help but think that if we had the Rams playbook with the players we've got, we would have battered that. We would have beat them by 20 points that game. Yeah. But only with McVeigh calling it as well. Exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans 
can do the same job Cooper Cup did and Woods, if yeah. not better. Yeah, definitely If they can better. steam it up so easy, surely mm. we can do a better job. And yeah. it's not, I, I, don't, I don't believe it's Brady's fault. I'm giving him a pass. The interception at the end and everything, that might have been his fault. But um, I thought he had a, a good game, Mike. We're just asking him to do the wrong things. Exactly. Yeah. His arm still works. He's still throwing lasers in between players. Yeah. He's still doing no, all the good absolutely. things. It's just a scheme something up better for him. Mm. Uh, okay. Let's flip over to the other side of the ball then. And maybe Alex will start with you. Um, I, I thought the defense did okay. Uh, only okay. But I think, you know, when you're playing, this is a good team we were playing. We, I, we were never going to, this was never going to be 35 nil, was it? No, absolutely not. Um, the uh, I agree with you. I, I think the word okay, I think, is a good way to, to describe the defence. First half, I didn't think they were brilliant. Second half, they really stepped up. Um, the, you know, the, it's, I've still got a massive issue with this zone um, defence we play on pass on the pass plays because it is just, there's so much space and that's how um, Woods and uh, Cup, they, they, that's where they found the space in between the D line and the, uh, and the linebackers and their yards after catch was ridiculous. It, they combined for 275 yards. That's more than what Brady threw in the whole game. It's, it's crossing routes. It's, it is. It's it's exactly, if, I'm, it's, if I'm man to man, exactly I'm running that. with the guy. If yep. I'm in a zone, the guy comes into my zone, catches the ball and goes out my zone. Mm -hmm. They're accelerating. They're catching the ball on the move. They are. You can't yeah. catch them. No. It's so uh, easy. It, yeah, exactly. And it, so it, easy. But you, it, the thing with zone defence, I think it's very similar to UK football. You have to be so disciplined to play that defence. And we've still got a very young defence, a good defence, one that I really do like, but it is still growing and developing. I'm not convinced as a defence we are quite good enough to play that zone to the ability it needs to be played. On man coverage, we're phenomenal. We are at, we are one of the best, if not the best teams in defense when we are doing man coverage. But that zone and soft coverage, it, uh, if Patrick Mahomes was watching that, he's licking his lips right now. <laughs> he is going to be so excited to play against hold that, that soft hold coverage. That yeah, I won't go any further for a minute. It's just a mention. <laughs> but Dom, um, Dom, so I think, I think <laughs> Alex is talking about the back end, the coverage, and I think everything he says I agree with. But the front end, I mean... There's a saying, isn't there? Poor coverage can be made up for if you get if you get to the QB. Yes. And we weren't, were we? No, 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 we weren't. No pro pressure at all. I mean, look, we go on about, uh, I, got, I think we ranked seventh, but we're also, I wrote three things, we're 16th in the league in third downs, 24th in red zone, and 21st in goal to go. And it's, it, I don't think it's good enough. I think, the, when the, their wide receivers were catching the ball, how many times in the game did we not tackle them? We got yeah, to them. first yeah. tackle. Yeah. yeah, we were there. They shake them off another 10 or 15 yards. Yeah. And then we drop into soft coverage. Crazy. Absolutely yeah. crazy. But I know what you mean. No, yeah. we never looked like sacking him, did we? We never no. looked. I, I don't no. know. I mean, the other thing is, is everyone goes, but we're number one against the run. Are we, yeah, we yeah. over-engineered against the run? Because I'd rather be number one against the pass than number 32 against the run. Yeah, I think the figures of number one against the run is a little bit skewed. Because as the, as the season goes on, at least, teams are going to realise they don't need to run on us if they can just keep throwing and get in 230, 250 yards a game plus. So we are good against the run, no doubt. But I think some of those figures, especially as it goes on, are, uh, it's not a true position of where we are just because we, why why would you run against us if you can just throw and get 350 yards yeah 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 as long Absolutely. as you don't throw near jpp <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, great couple of games he's had. I, I, yeah, I think he deserves a mention. Actually, he's had a really oh, good yeah. past couple of games. Um, you know, I thought Devin White was a bit quiet actually uh, on Monday. You know, Levante David made some plays, but we didn't see much of White there. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not too sure what happened on that one. But well, he's had, quite, he's not had the best season. I don't think he's. He started really well, but then he seems to have tailed off a bit. Mm. I think one of the few times he was mentioned when he jumped offside. <laughs> yeah, early on. gave him the first down, and they, they scored from that, I think, if I remember yeah. correctly. Two, it was the first, end zone. Two, first two touchdowns yeah. were directly from a penalty. Mm. Yeah. You can't do yeah. it. It's criminal. 
and, the and it was, and it was the blown coverage third. as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was well. blown coverage as well in the end. You know, the, yeah. the first touchdown, Bobby Woods ended up completely unmarked at the uh, the back corner. There was miscommunication, blown coverage. Minter. Um, I I, was it Minter? I couldn't remember who yeah, it was. But he, yeah, um, it was Minter, but he was off. Yeah. He was too slow. So, but that's just basic. Communication is the easy bit. You know, if we're mm. not communicating, that's, that's a bit of a problem there. I think it comes back to pressure again. So where you think back to last year with the D was getting, you know, sacks willy nilly. And we're not doing bad yeah. for sacks this year, don't get me wrong. Not it's right. just well, the well's dried up a little bit of late. <clears throat> when you were getting sacks willy nilly, teams were trying to run the ball so that we couldn't hone on on the quarterback, mm-hmm. which then made us number one against the ball because everyone was still running through the line anyway. Exactly. But what I think we're finding now, now we can't get that pressure. Actually, we're in that zone scheme. We're, in, you're, we're seeing Devin White, I think, exposed trying to cover mm. yeah. and you know that's clearly not his strength but if you're going to be a linebacker yeah. in the nfl you've got to at least be able to run with a running back or a tight end yeah i've noticed in a, in a few of the games we dropped a cover three and then we've got a tight end against levante david or mm. or devin white yeah. and it's a touchdown or it's yeah. a tight yeah. end going for yeah. 13 yards or whatever and it happens on third down a lot and it's yeah. just it is. It's exposing the linebackers. But like I say, when you're in cover three, you've got you've got no one left in the middle of you. So that's um, right. So yeah. it's no. the other teams. They're scheming up the obvious mismatch with Levante David having to cover a massive tight end. And if we can see it, I'm pretty sure every other offensive coordinator in the league can see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goff did impress me. He was a very mm. good player. Goff, because we what, don't what tend was to watch about yeah. Goff that, that really what would what do you sort of take from him that you'd like to transfer his presence, his presence mm. in the his pocket? It, yeah, yeah, and he always saw when the tackler was coming, just got rid of the ball just at the right time. I thought mm. didn't often have to throw it away. Very impressed with him. I think the one most underrated stat, and it's not really that underrated, is completion percentage. Um, and you said about it earlier, Adam, about just keep chipping away at the downs. Yeah. It's Whatever it's you're doing, it just, I think, you know, I don't know how much of football is psychological, but uh, if every down you're taking a couple of steps forwards and the defense is taking a couple of steps backwards, you've got to feel better about yourself. And his, I, mean, I, I can't remember when they were at one point in the, I think it was the third quarter, they flashed up the stats and he only had something like three incompletions. And mm. they weren't asking him to make difficult deep throws. I mean, they still had a, a couple of shots. Um, but you know, I, I think he, he made those throws and he made them well. I'm, I, I think you're right. He's a really, really good quarterback. Um, yeah. But I think we've got a really good quarterback. 100%. <laughs> we've, got we've got a, a better team. Yeah. That's what's so frustrating. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe we haven't got a better coach. And have you said, do you want to swap receivers with the Rams? You know, I wouldn't either. No. no. I wouldn't no swap chance. anything no. bar their playbook. Just, mm. You give us the playbook and we'll give you ours. And then we'll batter you by 20 points <laughs> or, or we'll keep it close by three. Maybe Aaron Donald. Aaron yeah. Donald. Yeah, yeah. We, we'll have him. He's yeah. all right. <laughs> we'll yeah. take him. Yeah. You can yeah, have well, Nuno. We'll swap your Nuno for Aaron. Yeah. <laughs> and a fault. Yeah. yeah. I like the matchup with uh, I like the matchup with Ramsey and Evans. I that was good fun to good, watch. Yeah. yeah. Battle yeah. back and forth. It was. Yeah. yeah. That I, was hope good they, to watch. I hope they did a mic'd up with them because I think that would uh, that would be entertaining. JPP was mic'd up. He was, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think Evan's got away with a couple as well. Uh, Where... He does every game. Yeah. Yeah, I say, yeah. He does every time, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he was he flagged against him. He flagged against uh, Ramsey and he was better. You could he see when lucky. you watch it slow much though. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's move on to special teams, my favourite. <clears throat> um, as you said earlier, Adam, we we lost by a Matt Gayfield goal. Um, <laughs> unusual for that to happen when he's not on the team. <laughs> Talk about karma. You can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> How did you think special teams went? Well, I've got a quote that I've written from the game. Mm-hmm. They do well until they have to play. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's so frustrating. <laughs> I didn't think they did all that bad until the last last 10 minutes. What the hell was going on on that last kickoff yeah. uh, punt return? Just leave it go. Call a fair catch. He lost us five yards and like five seconds. That so is I, peewee football. It's ridiculous. Someone shouts poison and everyone gets away from the ball. And if yes. anyone touches it, the coach like grabs their helmet and sticks it in the ground. I know. And on one of our classic returns... We run directly into Minter. Who was it? Was it um, Barner? 
Yeah. Was returning, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think Barna, so. running straight into the back of Minter. You just think, oh, we, it almost looks comical when it's happening. It's like the uh, the butt fumble players are all over. <laughs> <the place. laughs> yeah, I think your C minus might have been a bit genuine. Oh, I'm uh, given the great deal. I'd be lucky to get a C minus. <laughs> well, that's you what know, I'm thinking. Be a bit generous. Yeah. I thought, Go, tell us why, Dom. Well, I just with, every week. Other than suck up, nothing else seems to impress. I'm sure they no. work on it all week. We never look like running mm. one back, do we? We never look like no. it. It's so no. frustrating. It's the same, like you were saying, the same as the run game. It's the same with the return game as well. And I think the coverage yeah. as well. The, the, what what disappointed me was the coverage. There were a oh. couple of times on punts where Pinion outkicked his coverage, as in he booted it too far. Yeah. Um, mm. And there are other times where I think the coverage was just slow. Mm. And um, there was obviously, there was, I can't remember who it was. I couldn't really see them at the bottom of my screen. Someone sort of pulled up, um, having hurt themselves uh, on, on one play. Uh, but other, I mean, that's fair enough. If you pull your hamstring, that's a good excuse. But but otherwise, and, and the first person there, not making the tackle. Oh, yeah. it's, 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 one it's, job, it's not to run down the field 50 yards and miss. Yeah, mm. they've got one job, haven't they? If they mm. can't put that effort in, there's something wrong. But I, th- I think uh, it's it's interesting because of what Matt said when he was on. You know, I, I, if I remember correctly, he said about how he was watching other punt returns and they were running to the edge of the field, which obviously makes it harder for the uh, the kicking team to make the tackles because if you got if you run to the edge, you've got a lot more space to work with. As Adam said, we're just doing our classic uh, returns where we're going straight down the middle. You're basically yeah. just saying, "Yep." I, 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 here you go. Come and have me. You know, stop me yeah. at the at, at the earliest yeah. point you can. We've got to start running out wide, like 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 the best punt returners do. It makes it a lot harder for the uh, the kicking team to make a stop. And I, I don't I don't know why when they're not being coached like that. Uh, like I say, not a football expert. There's clearly no. some idea that um, our, uh, sorry, I don't know his name, but our special teams coordinator's got, but I can't see what it is after, you know, one Armstrong. and a half seasons. Is it Armstrong? Thank you. Uh, but I can't see what it is after one and a half seasons of having him as a coordinator there. No, too true. Even okay, when then. you don't want him to run and try and return it, they, they, you want to call a fair catch, he tries, he decides to run it. And you think, come on, okay. man, we're on the clock here. Like. Yeah. I mean, it, what was annoying, though, is that we couldn't even take advantage of basically a free play, which was when um, the, uh, the the Rams uh, one, it hit one of their players' knee, I think, and yeah. we tried to pick it up and he fumbled it. Now, because their player touched it, like I say, you, you just get a free play there. So if he picks it up and makes a couple of yards, amazing. But we couldn't even take advantage of, of, of we couldn't even take advantage of that. <laughs> you know? um, if, uh, as Dom said, the only the, you know to say a positive, you've got Ryan Sucker up as being sensational. You know, in terms of the field goals and you know kickers, he's been great this season. So that's definitely a positive on the special teams to say. Mm-hmm. At, the, at the end of uh, well. each year, when we uh, have our Bucks UK awards, then. Uh, there will be a special teams player of the year. He's pretty much a shoe in at the moment. Yeah, I think. yeah. <laughs> you might as well get it in the post. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We start engraving it already. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. If you're if you're coach Arians, first of all, you know, go to the asylum. But after that, get your magic wand out. What are you going to do, um, Alex? Let's start with you. Uh, uh, is it? I've written three down, three things here, but I'm only going to say one because, of course, Dom and Adam have got to come next, so I don't yep. want to steal any of their thunder. <laughs> so I think out the three. Well, I'm gonna go for this. I, I want, I want this zone coverage, this soft coverage to stop because it's been happening every week this season. We played it on on the pass, and if something doesn't work. Unless I'm missing something blatantly obvious, if it doesn't work, you change it. Now, it, it needs to go because it, 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 we are just conceding too many uh, pass, yard, uh, pass yards with that soft coverage. So if I've got the magic wand, I want us to change to maybe to maybe a, 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 a man-to-man defense to stop uh, these these yards on the passing. Or you know, man press, man zone, something, yeah. some variation of man that doesn't Absolutely. involve me covering a big circle with someone running through it. Correct. That yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Okay, Adam, work your magic. Well, 
you don't even need a magic wand for I'm going to say. You just need to have a conversation with the coordinator. If I'm Arians, I'm taking accountability and I'm going to call the plays on the next game. That's what my magic wand would be. Take the pressure off your coordinator. Do what you think is best and let's see if there's any different. Let's see if it works, especially against Kansas City. If, if there's ever a time to have a shootout, then this game is the one. If we can out, try and outshoot them with um, the quarterback whisperer's playbook, let's do it. Let's do that. So, yeah, my magic wand would be take the play calling over. And if you take it over, what sort of plays are you calling? <sighs> Anything that left which hasn't been doing, has been doing. <laughs> Anything. Just the total opposite. I'm calling runs. So he was on the even pages. You're going to the odds. <laughs> I'm just going to. I'm just going the high percentage, crossing routes, anything to give the old line a chance. Just get it, get it out quickly. Tom Brady quick. is an expert at getting it out, and just make it easy for everyone. Check a little run in every now and again. Don't have to keep checking it to the running backs. What about no huddle? I've seen a couple of teams when they've been mm, having glitching against us going to the hurry up. I'm, I'm not sure, but that could be something. Well, try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and try it. It can't be worse. Fair enough. Dom, magician man, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, if I, my magic wand would be no more third and longs. If we could some, t- some way alleviate that, I'd be a happy man. And I think that would just tie in with bringing Shady McCoy in. If, if I can just, I'd just like to follow Dom. I had a second magic wand, if I may. I'm, I'm just thinking back to the Chicago game and the LA game. We lost by one score. Now, if we if one of those field goal drives had been, had been a touchdown, we win the game. So I want to see our offense finishing drives with touchdowns, as it's been quite a few times where we just haven't been able to take advantage of a great field position and get into the end zone. So that's another one for me as well. Good call. My one would be a variation on Adams, I think. Uh, and I'll just say it in a different way to try and be provocative. I think <laughs> no pass... Over 20 yards. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I'd love it. Mm, like that one. Yeah. No, like that. No, and, and that will make us do it differently because we can't yeah. just keep running verticals. Mm-hmm. We've got Scotty to find Miller a different won't be happy. <laughs> But he can just well, go sideline to sideline. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That would be my one. Yeah. Okay. But then, obviously, you guys have an opinion too. And uh, thank you very much for airing those opinions. And we'll take a look at them now. So our first view is from Andy Harwood. When are we going to adapt to our QB? They went all out to get Brady and still use the Winston playbook. We have three elite wide receivers who can do multiple things, short and long plays, and all we do is launch it long with little success. And who's up next? The Chiefs. I think. Um, <laughs> Great point. And you might want to open up your other Bucks, um, Bucks cup there with the beer in <laughs> and uh, so you can get through it. <laughs> Nick Mort. <clears throat> the game has positives. Both first, both first half, both O's were good, D's bad. Second half, both D's were good and our O was bad. There are a lot of frustrations throughout the game, but there were some fantastic plays. It was there to be won. And that's true. We, you know, we have to keep coming up with some respect. We did only lose by three points. We did have the ball back in Tom Brady's hands with more than two minutes to go. <clears throat> Normally, those things, you know, you'd be happy about. Uh, Philip Bushby, uh, the problem with the Bucks is I can just as easily see us walking into Kansas City, pull out a masterclass and beat the Chiefs as much as I can see us getting absolutely blown out. OK, maybe I can't see it quite that easily. Uh, <laughs> we'll come on and talk about that. But I, I get your sentiment. Yeah. <clears throat> and then Gary Willard, looking like 10 and 6 and dare I say one and done in the playoffs. <laughs> it hurts, Gary. Positive, very it? positive. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you for those views and thanks to Bucks Report for their help promoting our podcast. Um, this week we have yet another beanie hat and Bucks UK 2021 patch uh, to give away as an early exclusive. Um, and we shall see who's this week's winner is. If you can see yourself on the wheel, uh, good luck to you. That's quite a hypnotic play, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's one of the youngs. Oh, well done. One of the youngs. Well done to you, We Mark, as he is better known on the forum. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how We Mark really is these days. 
But um, <laughs> yeah, well done to you, we Mark. You shall get your goodies. And Dom, you've been kind enough to donate some good prizes for next week, haven't you? What what can people win next week? Yeah, I've actually got them here. I don't oh, know. Well can you see? Dom. So I've got the program from the Patriots game. That's when Tom Brady used to complete his passes. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got three cards. So there's a Leonard Fournette one. These are prison ones. And there's two different coloured ones of... Uh, Very nice. Keyshawn yeah. Vaughan. Keyshawn Vaughan, yeah. Another one you might not see. So they're the prizes for next week. Fantastic. So we'll get those on the forum. They'll be on tonight and it'll be ready to go uh, tomorrow morning and uh, get into those competitions. Uh, at which point then, we've talked about the Chiefs. That's clearly the buzzword. Let's look ahead to... Um, our next game against the Kansas City Chiefs. So Kansas is coming to Tampa. Um, we hope it's going to end well. Uh, it's a nine o'clock game here in the UK. Uh, it's going to be shown on Sky, which petrifies me because every time we've shown on Sky, we've not shown up. Um, you know, so this is going to be tricky. So Dom, let's start with you. What do you think your your key to the game is? <laughs> well. I think the key to the game would be trying to stop Patrick Mahomes, whether we can or not, whether we can is another thing. But I'm thinking more like 2002 yeah. against Michael Vick when Atlanta came into town and he couldn't even get off, could he? He couldn't even get off. So that's the key. If we can stop Mahomes, I think. I have heard good. about this Mahomes chap. He's meant to be above average. It's not bad. Yeah. No, it's not bad. He's quite good out of the pocket as well. But yeah. we've also got Tyreek Hill, Kelsey. It's going to be stopped. All we've got to do, yeah. basically, is just stop the run and stop the pass. There you go. <laughs> Easy. Easy. <laughs> Alex, what's your key to the game, then? Oh, I think Dom's covered it, hasn't he? And all that. You know, he could cover the, 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 the game. The skeleton key, the spare key to the game. The spare key to the game. Um, is... I think it goes back to what I was saying about defense. It's 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 making sure we cover the pass properly. You know, whatever way we do it, um, it's trying to ensure we uh, we stop their receivers. Now, I'm not concerned about the run game because we we we've got a, we've got the best run defense, so I know we're going to be fine there. But we need to make sure we defend against the pass. So that's my key: make sure we defend properly against the pass and limit Mahomes and the, uh, his receivers to as little yardage as possible. And if you are Todd Bowles, then, when you say defend against the pass, is yeah. that about trying to limit completions, limit yards after catch? Are you going to gamble and try to be super aggressive and try and go for the ball, knowing you might give up some deep ones? I think against Mahomes, you've got to be aggressive because he's just that good. You know, if you get if you show him too much respect, he's gonna he's gonna take it a hundred percent. So maybe we do need to try to try that try that aggressive side and, and push up a little bit more, possibly. Um, yeah, it, I mean, look, it's going to be a tough game, uh, and and Todd Bowles is going to need to have one heck of a defensive plan to stop Mahomes. We all know that, so maybe the aggression could work against him, possibly. But he always seems to have an answer for everything. Does uh, this uh, amazing number fifteen that uh, Kansas have got? Yeah. Okay, so Dom's going to wrap Mahomes up. You're going to be pushing and shoving with the receivers. Adam, <laughs> what's your key to the game? Uh, I got two little keys. I think. The first one is you've got to work on this tackling because the amount of first tackles we missed the other day was strangely criminal. And we don't usually do it that bad, but they've got to make these first tackles. Um, the second thing is I'm not too worried about, I think it's going to be a shootout. So I'm not too worried about getting too much pressure on the homes because I think you'll pick us apart too easy. So my other key to the game is trying to impose our will on them. I think we've got a good enough offense to take it to them just like um, Derek Carr did with the Raiders in that first game. And I'd like to see us establish a run game, get it going. And then we can surprise them with Mike Evans and whoever else, Antonio Brown, you could take your pick of the receivers, even Cam Brake getting in the action, anything. 
but it only works when we've established the run. I would agree with you a million percent because mm. you are not going to stop the no. Chiefs. Oh. And, but but you've, you're right. Their last few games have been surprisingly close and surprisingly high scoring. Um, I think it was in a shootout. We are going to struggle to keep pace. Um, so you're right. If we can run the ball, we can control the clock. Mm -hmm. And we need to, I think for me, it's, it's clock management. We need to make sure that whatever way the coin toss goes, we need to get the ball on the last series, both halves. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. will give us two more possessions than them. And that could be the difference. And the, right, yeah. the way we do that is running the ball effectively. Yeah. Um, I don't really know much about the, the Chiefs defense. I was looking down their depth chart and, you know, yeah, yeah, Honey Badger and, you know, whatever. Mm. But then, I mean, this is my ignorance. They're not names that I've, I've noticed, um, you know, cropping up every day. But clearly they aren't too shoddy either. They got to the Super Bowl. Um, so I, I guess that, that what that means is, is we're probably going to struggle who to target. There's no obvious weakness. There's no obvious, you know, you don't have to double someone, but at the same time, where are you going to target as well? And I know if we're, you know, are we going to be decisive enough? Get Godwin in the game, I think. Yeah, big time. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, so in terms of players yeah. to watch yeah. then, you think Godwin is going to be the the kingmaker? Godwin and, and Shaq Barrett as well. I, I, won't be, I want him to really step up. I know he is a hard man to stop, Mahomes, but... I think if he can just get there, just rush, beat the path, I'm sure he can get there and, and put pressure on him. He's been quite quiet, anti Barrett. Another one. You're right, and, and actually, Mahomes, as we said, is good outside the pocket as well. I'm, mm. I, seeing him throw on the run is almost like fancy it's unreal. football itself. It's, it's, it's uh, amazing yeah. to watch. It's yeah. really good to watch. So the trick well, he is he sidearms to... it as well. Mm. He sidearms yeah. fantastic. Mm. Gives so him the eyes, left doesn't left he? Yeah. So, so yeah, the trick is to not let him out of the pocket. And mm. actually, that's going to be Shaq Barrett's job, and Shaq that's going Barrett, to be JPP's yeah. job. Yeah. Yes. So they, yeah. they, I would be happy actually if neither of them got a sack, but they just contained yeah. him. Yeah. And let the middle exactly. bring the pressure, and yeah. actually, then that's where White or someone or David. You know, we've not really seen David blitzing a great deal. Um, yeah. Maybe it's some. You know, we've seen them both lining up in that A gap either side of the center, and then yeah. one of them normally drops back, and invariably it's normally David, um, and or they both drop back. Um, but yeah, maybe we need to. That's how we bring the pressure up the middle. Yeah, and then Winfield's have the a outside. big game as well. Yeah. Let's get Winfield in there. Winfield's been amazing, hasn't he? Yeah, oh, it's incredible, been brilliant, absolutely yeah. amazing. Yeah, I love his been... fire. He's just always mm. fired up. He's mm. he's a he's a good person to be around by the looks of it on the pitch. I mean, he never gives up on a play. He no, never he gives doesn't. up on one. Yeah. You I, see I, him, I, and there's no chance of getting the ball, but he just he's tearing after. Mm -hmm. in, uh, their player, mm -hmm. no matter what happens, he never gives up on one play. He earns mm -hmm. his money. I think we've got a good rookie class in general this year, to be honest. Superb. You know, you know yeah, not, superb, don't get me wrong Alex. here, I completely agree with you. Winfield's been brilliant, but worse has been absolutely mm -hmm. outstanding. Mm -hmm. What a first pick he was. Uh, I think Tyler Johnson's been great as well when he's come in for the plays here and there. I know we've only seen, uh, seen Keyshawn Vaughan a little bit, but whenever he's been on, I've been impressed with him as well. So I mm. think we drafted. I think that we drafted really well, and we've got a really good rookie class this year. Really good. Yeah. I'm I'm really excited for the future of these rookies that we've got. Really mm -hmm. excited. Yeah, well done, mate. Okay, so score predictions then. Mm -hmm. Adam, are you going to have to get your your socks off when, as well, aren't you, to count on this shootout? Yeah, I know. What's it going to be? I said 38-35 for the last game, and obviously it wasn't. But I'm going to go 38-35. I'm going to say the Bucks. Go on. Ooh, wow. There you go. From the Pete Payne School of Optimism. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't lost like yet. It. <laughs> Alex. Well, in our uh, um, you know look to the seasons episode we did at the beginning of the season, I had this game down as a loss, uh, and I'll be honest, I've seen nothing that changes my opinion on that. So I am sticking with my opinion that the Bucks will lose this game. Um, I've actually written two scores down here because I, I was really sitting and having thinking about this and looking at what the, the points Kansas have put up this season, this season so far as well. I think if our O-line is makeshift like it was on Monday, I think we'll put points up. 
but I think we're going to struggle again a little bit. So I think Kansas, with a, a makeshift O-line from us, I think Kansas will win 35-20. If we've got our full strength O-line back, which is looking possible, I believe, I think we'll give them a much, uh, you know, uh, we'll make it a much tougher game for them, but I still think we're going to lose. I think it'll be 35-31 Kansas if we have our full strength O-line You're back. only allowed one prediction. No, I've gone for two uh, no, so which, which one of those is more likely? <laughs> which one's more likely on the basis of what I uh, it dipped to? Um, I've, I've 35-20 Kansas. No. Okay, telling it like it is, Dom. <laughs> I'm not. Are, are you going to bring more pain? I'm not having that, Dom. No, 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 no. I think Brady doesn't have two bad games on the trot. Yes, and we're going to win. We're going to squeak it, but it, he will control the clock. I've not got a, any concern, and we will win thirty twenty-seven like with it. suck up scoring as time runs out. I hope I, I hope I'm wrong. Let me say this now. I really want to be wrong here. Trust me. Don't worry, Alex. You're not going to be wearing. Kieran. You're not going to be wearing that lone wolf hat. I'm not going to wear your hat. Thank you, Kieran. I, I also think we're going to come up short on the wrong side of the school. I do think it's going to be a shootout. I do think it's going to be close. I do think um, someone's going to be kicking a field goal to win that game on the last possession. And I think it's going to be something like 34 oh, 31. It's too close. Think, to yeah, who? To them. Kansas oh. City. Yeah. Uh, one thing I'll say, Dom, last time yeah. Kieran, and I think it might have been Alex as well, predicted a loss. And me and you predicted a win. <laughs> yes, mate. Yes. We have yes. up and battered the, Yes. The... Yeah, we battered yeah, them, mate. Yeah. Uh, Here so in that, in that case, Kieran and I have said the right thing then. We, we're winning. Yeah. Sorted. <laughs> yeah. We've done it right. I'm Very always true. delighted to be wrong if it means we win. Absolutely, I agree. I'll be on that forum. Cool. Okay, well, that's our views. We'd love to know your views. Uh, maybe comment on the video while you're liking and subscribing and clicking mm -hmm. the bell. Um, let us know on the forum. Tweet to us um, at Bucks UK on Insta, at Bucks underscore UK, uh, Facebook slash Bucks UK. Like us and uh, let us know your views. Otherwise, thank you, Dom and Alex and Adam. Cheers, Thank you. Very much. Thank you. See ya. And we'll see you next week for episode 18. Goodbye.